hi guys welcome to my youtube channel aerospace design so on this youtube channel we're going to see about introduction to aerospace engineering so and its basics okay so it's mainly focusing on the fundamentals and with respect to the fundamentals how we can able to design your flight vehicle so that's what our ultimate aim of this particular channel is all about so i want whoever is listening to this channel they have to come up with a new idea or innovative ideas which can help in the future generation of the aviation industry so coming to the point so the first topic on this particular lecture is history of aviation so how does the evaluation of aviation takes place so that's what we are seeing so in the olden days they have tried in different categories how to fly in the air so they have copied like the birds and then the fishes how it's been moving and with respect to those technologies they have tried different methods and a lot of people have died in this perspective also so with respect to that we have seen a lot of comic books and uh, stories which says that it is having a, a lot of uh, uh, stories which says people are flying in the air and they are reaching the other planet and they are going to moon and they're coming back and a lot of ma black magics have been taking place so those were the concepts which has been taking place in the olden days and when we are comparing with respect to that if you see here we have seen that in uh, 1638 so they say like the man is in the moon and then they have also copied the birds and then the fish uh, motions which they are moving and they inspired man to explore the principles of flight and the movements through the air so and they assume themselves that they have been carried out with respect to the birds in the air so that's what it's been shown here and then uh, later on the days like you can able to see that uh, Leonardo da Vinci who has found that ornithopter so ornithopter is nothing but your flapping wing technology and that helps to uh, take uh, the lift production process but in the actual scenario uh, that doesn't help much and the mission failed a lot of times and then the first time the object which has been taken off from the ground is by uh, founded by the person called Francesco di Lano Tessi so in the year 1670 so he found out with respect to some uh, copper bags which helps to uh, lift up the object from the ground so then uh, one public demonstration has been done by the two brothers who are joseph and Ethan Montgolfier, and they made a public uh, uh, presentation stating that they can able to lift up an object at an altitude of 6000 feet and they can move the object for a distance of one mile so which shows like it has been covered with respect to your balloon and balloon shaped uh, object which has been made up of uh, linen cloth Okay, so that is the given description here and then later on the days like they found out even the balloons uh, with respect to the airships so it's not been much more controllable and it is not it doesn't have the directional control and they fixed up some kind of engines which is required to control that uh, to produce the thrust output but then they can able to achieve only a sufficiently uh, power which can be able to uh, uh, give a RPM of or the speed of 14.5 of miles per hour and then uh, later down the stages we can able to see that uh, they used uh, the same airships for traveling around the Atlantic and then the first person who invented uh, the shape of aerofoil is by the father called father of na aerial, uh, aerial navigation is called Sir George Kelly. So he is the first person who uh, invented the shape of an aerofoil. And with respect to that, he found out that with respect to that particular shape, uh, the pressure has been more on the bottom surface of the wing, and the pressure has been less on the upper surface of the wing. So due to this pressure distribution, which has been taking place be uh, between the bottom surface as well as on the upper surface of the wing, so he comes to know that uh, it has been sufficient enough to produce the lift process. So he uh, designed a uh, aircraft shape which has been having your wing shaped uh, like the aeroplane shaped wing and then the fuselage and then the tail unit which has been jointed with respect to the fuselage and these type of shapes have been majorly used in the current day, uh, scenarios with respect to most of the conventional aircraft okay so that the same thing has been followed by uh, the auto person so he have done with respect to the uh, gliders so he have just observed the birds how it's been gliding without flapping the wings so the same way he just made an aircraft and uh, with respect to the airfoil uh, shape so he was trying to glide it and a uh, lot of attempts he have done so few of the attempts has been success but then uh, a lot of attempts failed so one of the attempts when he tried for gliding it it failed and he just crashed the aircraft and then the entire aircraft has been gone and he's also has been died 
on the year uh, 1896 august 9th okay so the last person who has uh, successfully done is nothing about the orville and the wilbur wright brothers so they have the first flight uh, in the history of aviation so that has been done on a day to day basis like they have taken the technology they have taken the concepts which has been already developed by sir george carey and other persons who have attempted it they have gone through all the uh, positives and negatives which they have faced and depending upon that they have made uh, the collection of data and uh, they have taken the aerofoil shape uh, configuration which has been given by sir george carey and then uh, they tested that wing and they tested the shape of the particular aircraft inside a wind tunnel which they have made in their cycle shop so that is how they have developed and uh, with respect to that small wind tunnel they have come to know how does the pressure distribution has been varying with respect to the uh, shape of the aircraft wing and then how it's been uh, behaving so accordingly they found out that it is required for the control stability of the aircraft so they invented some uh, flaps which is required to do this so that's all guys thank you so much bye